Now, Canada's former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney did meet George H.W. Bush on several occasions. In fact, they were not just colleagues but also friends, and Brian Mulroney will be one of the speakers to deliver a eulogy at George Bush's funeral, as we told you just moments ago. With that, we want to take you to Toronto. Mr. Mulroney standing by right now to share some of his reflections on Mr. Bush. Mr. Mulroney, thank you for joining us today. Uh, and, you know, as we laid out there, you, of course, knew Mr. Bush so much better than many others. Tell us more about the man and what stands out for you regarding George Sr. Well, what stands out about uh, George Bush is what a true gentleman he was. And as a Canadian Prime Minister, of course, I was privileged to work with him so closely because he loved Canada and admired Canadians. And he worked, as you know, very closely with me on two major events. One was the acid rain treaty uh, that got rid of acid rain in Canada uh, that had, you know, bedeviled our country for so long. And secondly was NAFTA, uh, which was the second step after uh, the Canada-US Free Trade Agreement expanded to Mexico and which today is $1.2 trillion a year business back and forth, which is the largest and richest free trade zone in the world. So. He did a lot for Canada, and he was, I should tell you, Michael, a delight to work with. Mm -hmm. So much to Canada, as you say. And you know, Mr. Bush, of course, you know this, led the U.S. in an era of great global change, uh, the end of the Soviet regime, the reunification of Germany, uh, Germany Tiananmen Square, the uh, first Gulf War. As Prime Minister, Mr. Mulroney, what was it like to know that George Bush was in the Oval Office? Well, you felt, you felt uh, very secure. First of all, for a Prime Minister of Canada, uh, he was extraordinarily accessible. He was friendly with us. Uh, I, could, I was invited down there countless times. Mila and I and the children have spent the last, I guess, the last 30 years at Kennebunkport uh, for Labor Day weekends and holidays down there. And uh, I was just there on the 28th of September, my last visit with him. Uh, so it was very reassuring to know that a man of George Bush's caliber, uh, high integrity, high competence. He understand, understood even the, the minor nuances of foreign affairs. Uh, he was so widely informed and so carefully attuned to the interests of various nations that it was a pleasure to see him work and to work with him. Mm -hmm. I wonder, in your opinion, what should world leaders and future world leaders, what should they learn from the example that was set by Mr. Bush? that there is a major place in world politics for a civilized, uh, humble, yet strong and assertive leader. George Bush, above all, was a loving father and husband who also deeply loved his country, but understood that America, no matter how powerful it was, to advance its interests had to cooperate with its neighbors and friends around the world. And no one did this to a better degree than George Herbert Walker Bush. He was fabulous. Uh, uh, it would be hard for me, having worked with him for so many years, it would, uh, the hardest question you could ask me would be to tell me, to tell us what I thought his weaknesses were. Mm -hmm. Because I have, to, I have to tell you that uh, on balance, uh, uh, while I, I, it wouldn't be hard to pick those out about for me, it would be f impossible for me to tell them any uh, to you about him because he was, he was a great man. Well, perhaps you're being too hard on yourself, Mr. Mulroney. But, uh, you know, that said, uh, you, you pointed out the fact that you spent some time with him in September, and that was months after Barbara passed away in April. Uh, yes. How was he doing? Well, how was he affected by her death, do you say? Oh, he was deeply affected by her death. We were at the funeral in Houston in April. Uh, and uh, I went down, Emil and I went down on the 28th of February to, excuse me, of September to Kennebunkport. He had um, asked me in January to accept the George Bush Presidential Medal of um, High Achievement in Public Service, which he gives every year. And I guess this year it was my turn. And I went down to make a speech and to uh, accept the award. And as usual, we stayed in George's home 
uh, along with Jim Baker and his wife this time. And so we had a chance to, he couldn't come to the ceremony. He was in a wheelchair because as you know, uh, he had uh, Parkinson's of the extremities, which made him almost paralyzed from the waist down. He had trouble speaking by now, and uh, he had lost the sight in one eye, but he was just as charming and as kind as ever. And he, uh, we chatted with him. Uh, the four of us spent uh, a long time together. He mostly listened because he couldn't participate as he once did so often. Mm -hmm. But it was a, a charm to be with him, and that was the last, as it turns out, that was the last meeting that I had with uh, such a wonderful friend. We all loved him, and well, he was a wonderful friend. I have to say, as, as you share words of Mr. Bush, obviously you, you have a great love and affection for the man. And now you've been given the honor to be one uh, person to deliver a eulogy at his funeral. Uh, do you know what you'd like to say yet? I have a pretty good idea. Um, you know, we're limited in time because there are going to be four eulogists, one of whom is his son, uh, President George W. Bush, and then there are three others of us including me, and uh, I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to say. I'd like it to be longer, obviously, because he deserves so much more, but I'll, I'll get it into the time allocated. Uh, I'll speak about his leadership, uh, his visionary leadership, his kindness, uh, his integrity as a leader, and in many ways, uh, his special uh, affection and respect for Canada. We got a lot done with George Herbert Walker Bush, believe me. And I didn't have to push him uh, on a lot of it. He was there to be helpful. He knew what Canada needed, and he wanted to make, a, he wanted to satisfy uh, Canadians who wondered about America's policies, for example, on the environment and things like that. That's how we got uh, such enormous progress in these various files.